Now in this drawing, we have just one single block and this entire thing is made with one block, believe it or not. So if you hover your cursor here, you'll notice that this one looks like a different one. This is different, this is different, so are these. But essentially it's all made with just one block that's called pipe block. Let me show you how it works. So if you want to make any kind of pipe diagram, well, all you need to do is just insert this. And this is basically the prompt for attribute. You can click OK here. Then click, click this arrow and select the type of view that you want. So here I'll select flange front and now I want to add the pipe. So I'll go to this insert and I'll add another view here. Click OK and here basically I will add pipe. All right, not only that, after adding it, I can now attach it maybe with this and I can increase its length to whatever length I want. That's it. Okay. Let's add maybe a T-joint here. We want a T-joint, so I'll select this, add it, and select the T-joint. All right, now once again align it. So I'll select and I'll align these two. Now, what about adding an elbow joint? Maybe we'll add it here. So I'll select this and here, let's make this an elbow joint like this. And also we'll rotate this one. So I'll just select this center, I'll rotate it by 90, and let's add the elbow joint right here. Now maybe let's just copy this one and let's paste it here and also we'll decrease its length. We don't want it this long. So here we are. Let's go to this one and once again add the front view of this pipe flange. So I'll select it and I'll change that to flange front and also I'll rotate this by 90 degrees. So there we are. We've got the grip. Just move it and done. And now let's copy paste this or maybe just move it. So in this case, I'll just make a copy right here and then I'll select it and I'll move it right where it should be. So in no time we managed to add, well, this dynamic block. And as you can see, everything is made with just one single block. Now, if you look at other methods of making this kind of dynamic block, then it usually hovers around making several smaller blocks, simple blocks, and then combining it all together to make one larger block. Now, I am not going to do that in this video. Rather, I'll use my very own method of using groups for making this dynamic block. So we'll use groups, we'll little break it, we'll clean it. So essentially, we are not going to make several blocks just to create this. In the end, you'll end up with just one single block. So to learn this method, watch this video till the end. And with that, let's get started. So here we have these five objects which will convert into dynamic block. Now these are basic objects, so circle, lines, construction line and so on. And if you look at this block library, you'll find it's completely empty. So we are making it from scratch. The first step is, well, go to blocks palette on home tab and click on this create option. Now give it a name. So I'll call it pipe block, just the simple name. Then click on pick point and select this center as the pick point. Now go to select objects and select everything in your drawing area, press enter. And in this case, select convert to block here. Now make sure annotative is not checked, scale uniformly not checked, allow exploding is checked and then select open in block editor. With that, click OK and we have a block which is now inside the block editor. So AutoCAD created the block and it opened it in block editor where we'll make the next changes. Now, the first step here is converting all of these blocks into a group. Now, why is that? Well, we need to actually move all of these blocks on top of one another. And when you do that, it will make a mess and it will be really difficult to separate the blocks and select them individually because you can see that we have a construction line here and here and here. So when they overlap, it will be really difficult to select the one that we actually need. So we'll convert it all into separate groups. Now to make it into a group, just type group on your command line, press enter and now select the first object and press enter. Now if you select this object, it will select all the sets of objects inside that group. So now it's a group and there is no name for this group. That's just sufficient. We don't want to name it. So now repeat the process, press enter, that will repeat the group command and make the second group. Press enter again, repeat it, again enter, select this, enter, again enter, select this, enter, again enter, select this and enter. So essentially we now have five groups. So these are all five groups. Okay, now we can move them on top of one another. So I'll go to home tab, move from the modify panel, select this and press enter. Click on this midpoint and then select this point. Now select this, click on move, select this midpoint and move it right here. 
Now again select this, click on move, select this point and move it here. Again select this, click on move, select this point and move it here. Now as you can see it is a mess but since we converted it into group it's easier to select these objects separately now. Okay, the next step is adding visibility parameter that will kind of separate all of these blocks. So go to block editor and here we have the blog authoring palette that we are going to use. If you don't have it, go to manage panel and click on this authoring palette and then it should show up. Go to parameters tab and select visibility. Now click at any point just close to this block. I'll click here and then go to visibility states. So now the visibility parameter is added, we'll add the visibility action. So here it is, these are actions. So go to visibility state and by default it has visibility state zero as the default state. Just click on rename. Now visibility state in this case is basically the name of five individual blocks that we want to combine into one. So just rename this to any existing block. So I'll call it flange top. So that's the top view of flange. Now click on new and just call it flange front. Again, I'll add another one. So this is pipe and I'll press enter twice and that's gonna open it again. And the next one is T joint. Again, I'll press enter twice. And the last one is elbow joint and press enter. So we now have all of these five visibility states, one visibility state for one block. Click okay and done. Now the exclamation mark is gone, which means, well, we have added the action, but still this block is not going to work properly the way we expect it to. So we need to do something here. And that something is actually, well, right here in the visibility panel, we need to tell AutoCAD which one is which block. So if you look at this drop down now, you can see that all the five visibility states are here, but if you change it, nothing will happen. So you need to tell which one is flange top, which one is flange front and so on. So I'll just select flange top. And now here we have make invisible option Select it, and now hide every block, which is not the flange top. So this circular one is the flange top. So I'll hide this. I'll hide well this one and I'll hide this. Now I'll press enter and also we need to hide this. So I'll go to this again. I'll select this and I'll press enter. All right, so everything is hidden except for this flange top. Okay, that's done. Repeat the process for all the five. So I'll go to flange front. Now again, everything is visible. So let's go to hide and just hide everything which is not the flange front block, which is, well, all of these. So I'll press enter and I think I missed this one. So I'll do it again. There we are. Let's repeat it for all of these other blocks. And here we are. So now you can see that all of these blocks will respond to changes and whenever you change it, it will only show the respective block. So we have added the visibility parameter properly. And if you now close the block editor, save the changes and go to the main drawing, well, we now have this grip and using this grip, you can change the type of block, but this is just half the work. We are still not done making the complete block. So let's go back to the block editor. So I'll select this block, right click and block editor. Now, before we move any further, I want to share with you my AutoCAD dynamic blocks course. Now, this is the most comprehensive course covering everything about making and modifying dynamic blocks right from scratch. Now, this course is part of SourceCAD subscription that will give you access to not only this course, but all the other courses of SourceCAD, including courses of other topics like Fusion 360, SolidWorks, SketchUp, and a lot more with Q&A support from instructor and live weekly sessions. Now check the course link here at the top and also in the description and start learning now. And now, well, add two more dynamic block properties. So I'll go to this drop down, and here I'll select flange front. Now this is where we will add the rotation parameter so that we can rotate it about this axis. But before I do that, I need to now explode these well groups. So all of these were actually made using groups, so we don't need it anymore. So let's now go to home tab and here we have the group option. Go to group and select group manager. Now inside this, we have this include unnamed, just select this and all the groups will show up. So these are all the groups that we created. Select them one by one and click on explode because we no longer need these groups. All right, all the groups are gone. Now click okay and back to block editor and we can now add the dynamic properties. So go to parameter, rotation, and I'll select this point as the pivot point, and then I'll click here and then here. So we have the parameter. Now, the parameter is associated with an action. So this will rotate your object only when you associate it with that action. So go to action, and here we have rotate action, all right? Now follow the command line. So select the parameter, which is this blue one, angle one, 
all right now it will change to select object all right select the objects which is this entire set of object and press enter done now we are ready with this block so this block will rotate about this central axis and you can test it out as well we'll do that later but now let's go to the next one so i'll go to this pipe option now what kind of property we want here well we want this pipe to stretch in both the directions so we should have something that will allow us to increase its length in this direction as well as in this and that is possible with this linear parameter so go to linear parameter and associate that with a stretch action because with a stretch you can stretch it in both the direction so go to parameter click on linear now i'll select this point and this point and click here to place that parameter now we have this exclamation mark which indicates that it needs an action so go to action and select a stretch now follow the command line so the first step is select the parameter which is distance one parameter now specify the parameter point which is basically a simple way of saying which point you want to stretch we want to stretch it towards this side so just select this side now specify the first corner frame now you should do that as if you are using the stretch command so i'll just make a frame that looks like this so i'm not selecting it entirely i'll just make it partially like this and now the last prompt is select object so everything that is made here should be selected except for this visibility one so i'll select it all and enter done now this side is done we need to repeat the same process for this side okay let's go to parameter actually not parameter it's already added let's go to action go to stretch select this parameter now select the point once again stretch frame that should look like this and all the objects so select it all like this and press enter done that is also done and the exclamation mark is also gone and our block is ready let's close it so go to close block editor save the changes and here we are now this may not look like much but now look at this i'll go to insert i'll select this pipe block and actually you know what we don't need this top view of this flange so i'll leave it here and then i'll go to insert and i'll just again add it here and we'll start with the front view so select flange front and now make a copy of this or you can insert a new one so maybe in this case i will just select this one and i'll convert it into pipe all right done now instead of moving it now we have these grips actually we can use that as well so let's use it i'll use this grip and move it up to this now in a similar way you can increase the length here so as you can see it is now in action all right what's next well we need to add a t joint here so let's go to insert select the pipe block add it here but now select it convert it into t joint done just go to move connect it with this all right that's done now we need to add an elbow joint here for that again insert the same block right here select convert it into elbow joint all right now here also we could have added the rotate command because with rotate we can rotate its direction and in this case it is not rotating so maybe we'll use rotate command for now but yes you can use the rotate action so in this case i'll just rotate it by 90 and then i'll move it right here now adding the rotate action will save some extra steps but nonetheless here we are let's add a few more blocks here so i'll just add another pipe joint here select and convert it into pipe and just move it right about here okay so far so good let's add one more pipe so i'll just select it i'll copy this and i'll paste it right here okay done now we also need to ensure that this is exactly equal to this so i'll just move it like this right here okay now let's close it for closing it we'll add the flanges here so i'll go to pipe block and i'll add one here just about here and i'll change that to flange front all right now in this case it should be rotated to 180 degree this should be outside so just click this grip and here we are you can rotate it by 180 degrees simply like this and as you can see this will save several extra steps now just copy this and paste it here and if you want to change its length it's as easy as selecting this and moving it here so you can just move it here and then simply move this pipe along just to increase the length and you can do the same here so you can just select this move this here and there we are so that was the step-by-step -step method of making a pipe diagram using dynamic block in AutoCAD and if you want to learn all about AutoCAD dynamic blocks right from scratch then check the AutoCAD dynamic block course link is in the description of this video I'll see you soon in another one take care